morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, this Sunday. It's a beautiful Sunday morning once again, and great to be uh, together as a congregation. I don't know if you've noticed, but obviously over the last two weeks, we actually have our own worship team back, uh, which has been super encouraging, and we're streaming live here from Surge, both uh, obviously the message this morning, but also the worship, uh, and who knows, over the next couple of weeks, we will prayerfully even have the worship team on video. Now, as I announced earlier on this week, just want to quickly unpack the plan for the future before we open with a prayer and go into the message. Uh, we are currently, as my guess is all of us now, in lockdown level three. So strictly speaking, we can meet outside at Barrow High School, but because we are right in the middle of the winter, we're going to press pause on that and review again in September. So for the next couple of weeks, or at least throughout the month of August, uh, we will still be streaming from Surge and be meeting in our homes. What I do want to encourage people to do, though, is if possible to meet by family group. Now, I know that currently the infection rate in the Western Cape is still fairly high. It's actually the highest throughout the country. I know also that currently we still have 250 deaths on average, believe it or not, a day uh, throughout South Africa. So we do want to still practice caution. But if you do feel safe, meet by family group. If you cannot meet by family group, I do want to encourage you, meet at least with another person or another family, but let's not do church by ourselves unless we are in a very high-risk category and you don't feel comfortable. That would make a lot of sense. But if you're not in a high-risk category and you're seeing other people anyway during the week, I do want to encourage you as far as possible, let's be the church. Let's not meet alone. When you are having church with other people, it's just a completely different experience. But before we jump into today's message, uh, why don't we say a word of prayer? Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the beautiful day you've given us, that we have uh, the gift uh, as Capetonians to live in such a beautiful city. And I pray today, as we pray in the mother city, as prayerfully later on today, we can go and bask a bit in the sun, that we will have great appreciation for everything that we have. Not only in this beautiful world that you've given us, but in a relationship with you, with one another, uh, that we get to uh, fulfill your purpose for us individually and collectively as a congregation. For I do pray today for uh, people that are sick. I pray that you'll comfort them. I pray that they will recover and get well. I know that currently there are about 16,000 people in hospital due to COVID. Uh, I know that even just in the last 24 hours, 250 family, odd families lost someone close to them. And we pray that uh, in this time that they'll turn to you and that they'll experience your comfort, Father. I, I pray for those of us that are healthy, that we'll appreciate the gift of life that we have, uh, and that we will use it to the benefit of others. I pray this morning as we uh, hop into part two of our sermon series, uh, lead me, open our hearts, particularly our minds, since we'll be speaking about the mind. I pray in your son's name. Amen. Uh, we are busy with a sermon series entitled Mind Change, A Biblical Path to Overcoming Life's Challenges. And as I said last week, uh, most or a lot of the content comes from a book called Mind Change, Thomas Jones, uh, by Thomas Jones. And then recently I've also added some more content by a book called Winning the War in Your Mind by Craig Rochelle. This is obviously a big topic. There's a fair amount written on it. Uh, in both neuroscience, uh, spirituality, uh, and a whole array of things. Uh, but I don't know about you, uh, but so often I battle in my mind between uh, thoughts of faith and thoughts of fear and anxiety. On the one side, I trust God. I believe that He is sovereign, that He created this absolutely stunningly beautiful ball that we live in and a massive universe and that He is in charge of it all. But then on the other side, at the same time, I also often feel like, man, if I don't take control, I'm not saying responsibility, we obviously have responsibility for various things in our lives, but if I don't take control of something, that it will fall apart. So one moment I feel full of faith and spiritual confidence that God is with me that He has called me to be His disciple, that He has called me to make a difference in my home and in my neighborhood and in my city. But in the very next moment, I can be overcome by a crippling insecurity that actually paralyzes me and then holds me back from what it is that God means for me to be in any given moment, in any given place. 
what I've discovered over the years is that our greatest battle in life is actually not physical, but it is in our mind. It's mental. Uh, William Shakespeare said that nothing is either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Most of our battles are won or lost in our mind. And therefore, to overcome life's challenges, whatever the world throws at us, we will have to experience a mind change. The good news for both you and me is that God is able and willing and wants to transform and renew our minds. At one stage uh, in the life of the Apostle Paul, uh, there was a lot going on in his mind, and you might relate with that. He said in Romans chapter 7, verse 15, he said, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. The man sounds confused. I do not understand what I do. I don't know why I do what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, what I'm not supposed to do, I do. I have the desire to do what is good, but cannot carry it out. I just cannot get it right. For I do not do the good I want to do. But the evil that I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Sounds familiar? Well, you know what's right, you know what you should be doing, but you just can't get yourself to do it. Or you know what's wrong and what you shouldn't be doing, but again, you just can't help yourself from it. Amazingly, seemingly later in his life, he seems to have progressed in how he thinks about life, how he thinks about God, and how he manages things in his own mind. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, he says the following, he says, for though we live in this world or in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power. He says the way that we battle things is not with the weapons of the world. He says on the contrary, the weapons that we fight with have divine, godly power. The word power in Greek's dynamis. It's an explosive, miraculous power that is from God. The word power, dynamis, is where we get our word dynamite from in English. It says the weapons we fight with have divine power to demolish strongholds. Now, in the ancient world, cities protected themselves by building themselves in a or a the city was built inside of a stronghold. They would have these massive walls around them. Some of these walls would be up to seven meters deep. And the whole point was to protect the people inside, be intimidating to the enemy, and that the enemy would say, this is impossible to infiltrate. Let's just back away. What Paul is saying is that Satan, our spiritual enemy, wants to attack our mind and create strongholds of deception that keeps us away from God's healing and calling for our lives. What Satan does to you, to me, is he tries to shape our thinking one lie at a time until we are prisoners of his deception. What does he tell you? He'll tell you very basic things like you simply can't trust people. He'll say things like you'll never succeed. You'll never overcome that character weakness. It's been with you all of your life. You will never get to the other side. It will never be possible for you to be happy unless you'll never get to make a difference. God doesn't hear your prayers, and particularly not if you pray the way that you do. He simply won't hear you.
and make it obedient to Christ. By taking every thought that comes into my mind, every thought that sets itself up against God and His Word, God's not hearing your prayers. Every thought that is against God's Word, I take it captive. I take that thought captive and I make it obedient to Christ. By changing our thinking, we can change our lives. Because our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Let me say it again. By changing our thinking, we can change our lives because our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Somehow, our thinking, our thoughts spill over into our lives. Studies have shown that several of our complications springs from our thought process. Things like Relational challenges can either be good or bad, depending on how you think about it. Things like eating disorders, depression, anxiety, addictions. All these, they say, people that study these things, can stem from unwholesome and unhealthy thinking. It all, those things all start inside of the mind. It all starts on what I think about. In the book of Proverbs, it says, For as he thinks in his heart, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Our lives and our being reflect our thoughts. What we think determines what we become. In other words, if you think that you cannot do something because you do not have what it takes, you probably won't be able to do it because you don't believe it. On the other hand, if you think that you can do something by the grace of God, you probably will. If you dwell on the negative, if you dwell and think about everything that's wrong in your life and wrong in this world and all the challenges at hand, your problems will ultimately overwhelm you. But if instead you believe that God created a gloriously beautiful world and that he set a garden in it that he wants you to expand and be a part of, and that he has empowered you to do it by making you in his image, everything changes. If that is what you believe, that God has set up us up for good, he gave us a good world, he made us in his image, he wants to utilize my life, your life, if you believe it and live by it, you will faithfully look for solutions to your challenges and you will faithfully move forward and as we said last week, you will overcome. If you always feel like a victim, like a prisoner that just cannot overcome, you will most likely become a victim, and you will most likely be a prisoner of your own thoughts for the rest of your life. If you, on the other hand, believe that by the grace of God and by the power of Spirit that you can be an overcomer, that you can overcome life's challenges, no matter what life throws at you, Without the circumstances necessarily changing, you can overcome. If you believe that if that's what your mind is filled with, you will overcome. If we were to do, let's say, a thought audit on each of us, what would your thought audit look like? Let's say we were to put down different categories. Category number one is worry versus peace. And we do a thought audit on are you worried or are you peaceful? Do you wake up in the morning worried about what will happen next? Worried about your finances? Worried about your job? Worried about your relationship with God? Worried about the house? Worried about your kids? Worried about your boss? Do you lean towards this side? Or do you lean more towards the peaceful side where you have a peace that transcends all understanding, that at any given moment, even in the midst of the chaos, you have peace because you believe that God is present. He's present here in our world, and He's present in your heart, and He's present in your life, and it's through Him that you have peace. Or let's say category number two when it comes to negativity versus positivity. If we were to do a thought audit, what is happening in your mind? Is it negative or is it positive? 
Do you wake up in the morning and you feel negative? Negative about the day. It is so cold. I'm never going to get through this day. Traffic is going to be difficult. Zoom is not going to work. The kids are going to be late. I'm going to be lonely. Is it negative? Or does your thought life lean towards the positive where you say, man, this day is waiting for me with open arms. And I believe that God is going to do great things in this day, in me, and through me that will be a blessing to others. Or let's take a look at a third category. Is your mind filled with the present world or the world to come? The Bible clearly talks about a present age, this age and the age to come, the age of God's new creation that has been ushered in by Jesus. Is it filled with the present age? Oh man, I wonder, I wonder who saw my Facebook post. I wonder if people are going to like my Instagram. I wonder if people are going to retweet. I wonder if people are going to see me. I wonder what I look like. I wonder whether I will be liked. I wonder if people think I'm pretty, whether they think I'm attractive. I wonder how my neighbors are experiencing me. I wonder if people like me, or do you think about the world to come? Well, your mind is filled with, man, God has given us such a blessing through Jesus, and my mind is filled with, how can God again work in me and through me to utilize the gifts, talents, time, treasure that he has given me to make this world even more beautiful? If we were to do a thought audit, what would it look like? What would you say characterizes your thoughts? What we think of matters more than you can imagine. Because what comes into your mind ultimately comes out in your life. No matter what you do or what you have or who you know or what you buy or where you live or where you travel... You cannot have a positive life while you have a negative mind. Why? Because your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Now here's a question worth pondering. If your life is indeed always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts, are you excited about the direction that your thoughts are busy taking you? The first time I realized this was about 15 years ago, I think about 2006, and I looked at my thought life and I asked myself, is my thought life taking me where I want to go? Every morning I would wake up almost feeling, not almost, feeling overwhelmed, feeling um, depressed, feeling, I'm not sure what this day is going to hold, I don't know where it's going to go, I don't feel, I'm not sure if I can do it, I'm not sure if I can get to the other side. And as I picked up on this and realized that this is what was happening in my mind, I realized I needed renewal. I needed God to renew my mind, to replace the lies that replay in my mind with His spiritual truth. So how do we do it? If you're finding yourself in a place or a position where you realize that my mind is mostly filled with worry, with anxiety, with negativity, with the present world, how do I get to the other side? Two basic things can help you this morning. Firstly, you must identify the biggest stronghold that Satan is using that's holding you back. You must identify for you on a personal level the biggest stronghold that Satan is using to hold you back. Back to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, it says, The weapons we fight with have divine power to demolish strongholds. The stronghold that I'm talking about is the thought, Satan's lie, that has locked you in. Most likely, not only for months, but years, and for some of us, even decades. What is the biggest mental stronghold that's holding you back? The tape that keeps on playing in your mind again and again and again. I'm not good enough. I don't fit in. My past defines me. There's no way that it can be different. No one will love me if they really know who I am. I'm always going to battle with my weight. I'm never going to overcome it. I'll never be likable. I'll never be disciplined. I'll never be good with people. I'll just never be able to do it. I'll never be able to relate. I'll never be peaceful. 
I'll never be comfortable. I'll always be anxious. I'll always stress. I'll never be able to get to the other side. I'll never have enough. What is the stronghold? The one thing that Satan is using that is preventing you from being close to God. The scary thing about our minds is that negative thoughts are literally changing the chemical makeup of our brains. Every thought that we think creates a neurochemical change in your body. When you think a positive thought, you get a surge of a legal and exciting drug called dopamine. And every time your brain gets filled with or shoots out dopamine, you sort of get a hit, a buzz, a thrill. You get likes on your Instagram and there's a thrill, there's dopamine, oh, I feel positive, I, I like it. And it's changing the neurochemistry of your brain. Someone likes a pose, someone likes a photo, someone says you look pretty, someone says you're attractive, someone says well done. You buy something that you like. You walk in the mall, and as you look at the windows, it's just dopamine, 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 dopamine. You see a nice car, dopamine. You think of a job that you would love to have, dopamine. A holiday you want to have, dopamine. It's a positive surge of energy released into your brain that comes with every positive thought. And what is interesting is that more often that you think, science tells us that the more you think a thought, the easier it is to think that thought again. Once you think a thought, you are creating neuropathways in your brain. Now, we literally have a billions of neuropathways in our brain. And the more we think a particular thought, the more of these connections are made, and the greater the path is formed. A stronghold. If you believe a lie for long enough, you will start to believe that the lie is true. Imagine that on, if you have a lawn in the front yard, backyard, imagine if you walk that same route, you walk a route on your lawn, day after day, a day after day for 100 days, what's going to happen? Ultimately, there's going to be a path that will be formed on your lawn. It works the same with your mind. If you think a lie for 100 days straight, it will create neuro, neuro, neural pathways through your brain. With the help of God, we need to renew this path. We first need to get off of the old path, and if you stay off of it for 100 days, guess what will happen? Things will start growing again. There will be more resistance, and it's not that easy to walk over. And at the same time, you need to forge a new pathway in your brain towards truth, God's truth, and God's truth that will set you free. In Romans chapter 12, Paul says it this way, he says, do not conform to the patterns of this world. And the context that we are talking about is do not conform to the unhealthy ways of thinking, but rather be transformed. Go through transformed metamorpho, metamorphosis. Go through a transformation, a metamorphosis. How? By the renewing of your mind. We need to stay off the destructive and unhealthy path while at the same time creating new paths. What does this look like? We all have a particular way of thinking, or we have triggers or things that trigger us. It can be relationally, it could be between a husband and a wife, it can be between friends, colleagues, it can be between a child and a parent, a parent and child, where my wife might say something to me a little, well, let me use an example. This week, I won't give the detail to protect the guilty, which is me. Okay, so uh, she makes a comment. We're in the lounge. We're watching TV. She makes a comment. I don't like the comment. I react to the comment. There is an immediate, there is immediate trigger. There's an immediate response. There is immediate, uh, I don't know what the, what the anger thing is, not dopamine, but whatever. It's like, yeah. Okay, so that's, that is my natural reaction. Whenever I feel, um, this is how it works for me, and this is whether it's with my wife, friends, whoever, if I don't feel heard or I don't feel understood or listened to or respected, there's an immediate, mm. okay? Now, what needs to happen is I need to be able to press pause there on the, mm, and saying, what can I replace it with? 
Can I replace it with a, man, I'm so sorry that that happened, or uh, help me to understand better, or uh, be kind, I don't know, give her a kiss, give her a hug. It's put a different thought, a positive thought. If I keep on thinking the negative, if I keep on responding in a negative way, it will create pathways and it is easier for me time and again and again and again and again to take that same pathway. I need to identify what is the pathway, what is your trigger that sets you into motion. The trigger that makes you depressed, the trigger that makes you overeat, the trigger that makes you feel sorry for yourself. I need to figure it out. What would it be for you? Is it a battle with your identity? Maybe you don't feel lovable. Maybe you don't feel good about yourself and anything that is connected to that triggers you. Maybe you feel hopeless, you feel helpless, you feel worthless, and then when someone initiates something in that direction or there's something that you need to do or that is expected of you that triggers that, then you just go back into that same pattern. The first assignment is, if you were to pick one thing, if you were to say, what is the one stronghold that Satan is using? And my guess is this is not difficult for us to figure out. I actually think that if we just sit down quiet enough for five minutes, we would all be able to identify one thing. We will be able to identify 20. But what I want to ask is the one thing. What is the one thing that, is, that Satan is using most to derail you from God's healing and power in your life? We have to identify it. Number two, once we've identified that stronghold, we now need to name the truth that demolishes that stronghold. Because it's like you're in a prison cell with an unlocked door, but you don't know it, so you can't get out. I'm sure many of you guys have seen this. You see it on YouTube where uh, bank robbers or someone goes to uh, rob a shop and they run in, they hold up the gun, they rob the bank, they try to run out, and they don't know that the door, they came in through the door this way and it opens that way. So now they run back and they don't know the door opens this way. They think the door should open that way. So they're stuck. They can't get out. They can't get out. They can't get out. You see videos where the guy literally collapses and he gives up and he waits for the police to come and get him. All he had to do is just pull the door open. Okay. It was an unlocked prison door. We are living in a prison, most of us, with an unlocked door. What is the truth that will demolish that stronghold, that will open that door. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought, and we make it obedient to Christ. We take captive. We are not being taken captive by our thoughts. Rather, we are going to take captive our thoughts, and we're going to make them obedient. And let me tell you this, they are not going to go down easily. I guess like training a small child, you don't just say to a two-year-old once, don't do it, and they never do it. You need to make them obedient. The word captive in Greek uh, means literally one caught by a spear or a lance. Okay, so it's again, it's an, it's a, uh, it's an attacking word. <laughs> In Ephesians 6, uh, Paul calls us, as most of us know, to put on the full armor of God so that we can stand up against the devil's schemes. Part of that armor, he says, is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God, the Scriptures, the sacred texts have the ability to set us free. We need to allow the Word of God to take captive the lies that have held us hostage for years. What is your stronghold? What is the dominating lie that Satan is using and has used in your life to destroy your faith, hurt your relationships, and hurt your intimacy with God and connection with people? We have to figure it out. And then we need to replace it with divine truth. For in 2 Peter it says, the Apostle Peter says, He's divine power, referring to both God and Jesus, has given us everything that we need for a godly life. He's divine power. No matter who you are, if you are a 
new creation, no matter what pattern of thinking you've had before, if you are a new creation in Christ, these divine power, God's again, we have the divine, divine power, dynamis, dynamite. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. I'm not talking about positive thinking. I'm not talking about if it's to be, it's up to me. I'm talking about that I trust God that through His Spirit, His divine power enables me to be what I cannot be by myself. His divine power enables me to break down the stronghold and get out of the prison. What is the driving lie that is holding you back from all that God is meaning for you to be in this world, to friends, to family, to neighbors? And what is the truth that will set you free? What is, it, what is the driving lie that's holding you back? I'm not attractive enough. I don't like the way that I look. Other people don't like the way that I look. I'm too fat, I'm overweight, I'm too thin, my fingers are too long, they are too short, my ears are too big, my ears are too small. What is, what is the lie that is keeping you captive and then what is the divine truth that can set you free? The scripture says, by the grace of God, that you are fearfully, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God has given each of us unique gifts to contribute to this great world. What is the lie that is holding you back? I'll always be miserable. I've been miserable all of my life. I'm never going to be happy. What is the truth that will set you free? The joy of the Lord is my strength. What is the lie that is holding you back? I will, always be, uh, I will always be alone. What is the truth that will set you free? I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Our lives in so many ways is moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. What comes into your mind will spill over into your life. You cannot have a positive, faithful life when you have a negative, fearful mind. We have to have a mind change. How are we going to do it? Two simple takeaways today. You need to figure out what is the stronghold that Satan is using to keep you prisoner, that is keeping you back from everything that you can be for the people around you. And two, what is the truth and God's scriptures that you need to put into your mind that you need to replace the tape with and replay, 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 replay till God's truth transforms who you are. And that you can then say with the psalmist, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we live in intention. As we live in a world filled with chaos, challenge, as we looked at last week, Jesus said, in this world you'll have trouble. But on the other side, we also live in a world filled with beauty in both creation and what you've placed inside of people. In the midst of all of this, far, Satan has held so many of us captive. For some of us, as I said before, it's been months, years. For others, it's been decades, Father, of believing a lie that is preventing us from being all that we can be for you and for our loved ones. For yet we know that as the scripture makes very clear, is that Jesus came as your presence representing you to break the power of the lie. For that he has broken through his death, burial, and resurrection the power that sin has over us, that we can indeed, through your mercy, through your favor, through your spirit, for be renewed, for we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Father, this morning as we partake in the Lord's Supper, as we eat the bread, as we drink the fruit of the vine, I pray that we will not only be filled with gratitude, but that we will be filled with hope, Father, that as you renew our minds, as we take your path for the future, Instead of our own thinking in the lies of Satan, we can be transformed and be who it is that you've called us to be. For we love you. We pray this in your son's name. Amen.